evening, everyone. Um, I'm going to sit here, and I hope you give me the permission to sit down. Because I've been up since 6 a.m., and I'm, I'm excited to be here. So I was like, OK, I want to be grounded. And I meditated with a monk friend of mine. And I did meditation, and I'm just over meditated right now. So I'm gonna sit down. <laughs> if I fall asleep, just wake me up, and I will pick up where I leave off, okay? Um, again, I wanna thank each and every one of you for being here. Um, I've always wanted to say this I've had people talk about how, thank you so much for being here. Well, you know, despite the beautiful weather, you've left everything and come here. I wanted to say that so bad and look at the weather today. But I'm going to say it anyway. Thank you for being here despite the awesome, beautiful, sunny weather out there. Thank you for being here. And I want to thank you, um, thank the elders in the room. Um, first of all, my father. Um, can you just wave your hand? My dad's here with me. And also, Philip Ahom. And also my uh, mother and father-in-law, Deb, uh, Bev, and sorry, I'm really tired. <laughs> Beverly and Bill Luffler here, and their last name is Luffler. Um, it's German. You've mentioned about German, Maddie, and your uh, Mr. Bennett. Is that right? So, Mr. Bantine. So that's Mr. Luffler for you. Um, it means spoon maker, and they do not make spoon today, but. Um, and my husband in the very back, who will also be my technical assistant, uh, Adam Joseph Luffler. I also, thank you. Um, I want to acknowledge my friends here, everybody, every one of you. I hope um, I get to be your friend. And I would love, 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 love to hear your stories as well. Um, we can always do a better job listening. We have two ears and one mouth, okay? I hope. Everybody has <laughs> that? Okay. Um, all right, let's get started. Um, if you don't, nothing you wrong don't. with that. Nothing wrong. That's right. Thank you, Jeff. Jeff. So, arrivals. Um, I titled my talk as Numerous Arrivals because I have a lot of arrivals. Um, let's click. So, first, this is where I live. Yes, it is in Tequila. Um, that's our very first home that Adam and I had the privilege of owning. And we love it. Um, and we are also very thankful to the Duwamish tribe. This is their land. And I want to I wanna acknowledge the elders that way. And um, yeah, and it has a little birdhouse. And so we're happy to share. Um, it's got lots of bunnies. Um, right now we have lots of hum hummingbirds. What else, honey? Lizard, oh my gosh, yes. We had a visitor lizard in our living room the other day, and the bunnies, I have indoor bunnies, the bunnies are like, what is this thing? Right. Um, I, who do I live with? I'm dominated by males right now. My husband, my dad, and my two bunnies are boys. So Horatio and Ambrose, they're up there, black and black and white. And the other one, the middle one's my husband. <laughs> and uh, my parents. And my mom is not here right now. She's in Korea on our way back here to the US. And we love to hike. So that's a picture of our attempt to hike. So uh, a few things I like to do. And I'm using technology just to keep me on track, because I have the natural propensity and my mentor, Deshaun, is nodding to go off tangent. And so I have a few things I like to do during the day besides taking really bad selfie of myself on hikes. Um, I just like to make, um, take pictures of my bunnies, sending cute pictures to my nieces and nephew uh, in Portland. Uh, one is here in Seattle, and then my husband likes to garden and then line up the tomato. He is a structural engineer, so line up the tomato by their sizes, color, and <laughs> kind. And I like to take pictures and eat them. And during the day, like Jeff was saying, I do have the privilege to serve the most diverse college. Hello, my friends. Come on in. I have the privilege of, um, yeah, I told him I'll wait for him for that. Um, I have the privilege of working and serving students at Highline College, the most diverse college in the entire United, uh, not entire, in the entire Washington State, and also one of the most diverse in the nation, and uh, ethnically. So, 
moving on, and that's a picture of me and my students at Kent International Festival. I would love to see something like that in Tokoa one day. Okay? So, um, so a lot of people, when they look at me, when I'm talking, they have these impressions of me. Um, that I probably was born here, that, you know, oh, she's probably a second or third generation Asian American. <sighs> the reality is, if you click at them, I am a first generation immigrant. I came a month before I turned 16 in June 20th, 2000. And I've been here for 16 and a half years. So you do your math and you'll get my age. Um, and I came and immigrated from this country in Southeast Asia called Burma, Myanmar, interchangeably. How many of you know where that is? Just raise your hand. Perfect. Oh, Maddie, yes, rock. OK, three of you, I'll teach you geography. Um, so it's in Southeast Asia, um, touching five different countries. Um, click. And uh, you guys already have raised your hands. And I just want to throw out a few more numbers in terms of arrivals, right? I have arrived, and I was, in 16 different homes in 16 years. That's moving on average of one home per year, right? Three countries by eighth grade. What, gr what grade are you in? Sixth, fourth. Okay. Nobody? Eighth grade, Tom? No? Okay. All right. <laughs> by eighth grade, I've lived in three different countries. I've lived in four countries by tenth grade. And I went to five different high schools. How many high, How many years of high school you guys have in the States? I went to five different ones. So in terms of arrivals, I'm not just talking about there is one place that we arrived. We are arriving, still arriving, and um, and I'm a person, I did creative work, and um, by the grace of God, and also by really good mentors, I've had the privilege to have different five job titles within Highline College, and I'm happy to be where I'm at. So, I want you to reflect on your own story. Okay, indulge me here. The question is, how many different homes have you lived in since you were born? So just take a, a few moments. I know a few of you are like, um, I don't have enough toes or fingers to count. That's all right. Just take a moment. How many homes have you lived since you were born? Close your eyes. If you've lived, oh, well, actually open your eyes because I need to show you what to do. <laughs> so, if you lived more than, if you've moved more than 20 times or 20 homes, I want you to do this. Two fists up. Okay? So, um, close your eyes. In your life, if you lived in more than 20 homes, two fists up. Can those people raise their hands up real high? Are you, uh, don't look, everybody, the rest of you needs to have your eyes shut. So those of you who have your fists up, are you guys comfortable with people looking at you? Yeah? Yeah, okay, open your eyes and look around. These women have lived in 20 different homes in their lives. All right, close your eyes again, everyone. If you have moved, over 15 times, so 15 and up. Do that again, two fists up. So those three will be up. Okay, you guys okay with people looking at you? Okay, open your eyes and look around your own. These people have moved over 15 times. All right, well give it up for these folks. And <laughs> with, with moving, it's not that easy. We're, we're moving places, and I would love to hear your arrival stories. And all of us, I mean, Maddie's have one home. Maddie, that is a gift to live in one home. Does that, yeah, that's a real good gift. Look, uh, listening to your grandparents' stories, they've 
lived in so many different places, haven't they? Right, Maddie? So moving on. Takeaway one, you guys probably picked this up already, numerous arrivals. And as we talked about numerous arrivals, um, I want to talk about the house that we lived in. Uh, my mother-in-law wrote my bio for me, thank you. And uh, yeah, it was built and owned by Finnish family. So they're, I don't have their permission, so I'm not gonna say their last name. Um, their father immigrated to the US from Finland through Ellis Island. And as you know, the story is not new, the, their last name got butchered by the immigration officer, so now they have a butchered Finnish last name. They built this house, they uh, lived out their lives, they raised three kids in that house, and Adam and I are enjoying their hard work. These men, like this man, the, uh, the, the owner, Mr., let's just call him Mr. Finland, uh, had, he was a carpenter. So all the, all the, Oh, Mr. Finland. Yeah, so he built all the cabinets. I mean, we inherited this beautiful wood pieces in the house. And now the children sold the house as an estate sale. Adam and I are interracial couple. You know, Adam's a mixed German, everything, Maltese, you name it, British Isles, right? And yeah, yeah, I'm not joking. Um, look at him, he looks Asian. Um, <laughs> And I'm, I'm Burmese American, and my parents live there. You see the change? The home has also received numerous arrivals in that, right? And our street has also changed. Like even in our vicinity, like five different homes, we've seen like two, two new neighbors. And I have the privilege of being a friend with my octogenarian neighbor um, who cannot be here today and learning about changes that our street has gone through, the end of the street. And I, I hear about the story of the house. I learned that from my neighbor who's lived in that street for over 30 years. And I've learned the story about the, uh, the street as well, and also the city of Tequila from my neighbor. Um, let's talk about something light. Let's talk about the president something light. Um, do you guys recognize this man in the middle? He was like, yes, I'm going to the White House. And I'm talking about arrivals. We're experiencing changes, right? Numerous arrivals means numerous changes in life. And the change that he also went through, if you look at him, he's all happy. And then what? he was this young, and he experienced the change, physical change, experience change. He was a senator, now, you know, community organizer, senator, president. And then when he jetted out, look at his hair. Oh my goodness. The change that happened to him and the changes. So arrivals, right? He arrived to the Senate, da, 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 different arrivals, different changes. And so what effects changes in life make, what effects changes in your life make who you are? Okay, that sentence is twisted. So Jeff Icky needs to help me out with that question. <laughs> the question I'm trying to ask is, what type of impact change make in your life? That's the question. So what I've seen is that changes have made uh, people adaptable, acceptable. And these are not binaries, by the way. It can exist you know, together. Some people are rigid and bitter and you know, welcoming, unwelcoming, angry, forgiving, completely shut up. Or we can feel all of that in such a short time frame. It's not just one feeling after another. Sometimes it comes in cascading effects. And speaking of, so, click. And as I think about how changes and arrivals make in our lives, there are two people that jumps out at me. Um, one is very personal, uh, um, close to my heart, is Aung San Suu Kyi. She is the Nobel laureate um, from my country. She is now the state counselor. Before she was a state counselor, she had been house arrested for over 20 years. Speaking of arrivals, you know where she was, uh, why she was arrested? She decided to arrive to her home country and um, there she was arrested. Speaking of arrival, arriving to your country of your birth, 
another person. But in in the new arrival and the change that she was experiencing, she was able to say this to the people in the world. Use your freedom to promote ours. Even in the new arrival that captivated him, her, she was able to recognize the privilege she had. She should speak on the genocide that's happening in her country currently. Though. Absolutely. I will be more than happy. And thank you. Thank you that you brought that up. Thank you that you brought that up. And so in red, thank you, Adam. So even in the captivate at home, and so the, the, the encouragement I have for you, sister in the back, is to remind the leaders there now that, hey, by the way, don't forget this line. Use, right now, use your privilege, your freedom, to promote the Rohingya's freedom. Sometimes, sometimes this is the danger. Sometimes we think we have arrived. And that's the question for each and every one of you. We sit on our laurels, you hear me? And we forget where we have started. The next person, Maya Angelou. So we experience new arrivals. What you will see is change, change is happening. Change here, change there. Oh my gosh, so many differences. Can we actually handle, hello Mr. Mayor, can we actually handle the change? You know what Maya Angelou reminds us? And I actually have a copy in my bag. Maddie, maybe you can, uh, I, maybe you guys can make a copy in, in her uh, very famous poem, um, Human Family. We are more alike, my friends, than we are unalike. Going next. I know I'm over time. I just need two more minutes. Thank you, my love. So here's the book. If you want to make a copy, there's a library copier there. And I also have a paper print in the purse, too. Thank you, Maddie. This is good. So this is where I got the poems from. So let us ponder. Are we alone in going through changes? No. You saw those fists that went up, right? And ponder. Are we done arriving? No. Take away. So take away two. Here's my encouragement to you. After moving so many times, still arriving, have courage to befriend. Just like Maya Angelou reminded us, we are more alike, my friends, than we are unalike. Make friends. My octogenarian neighbor, 89-year-old, I love sitting on his porch having beer and just tell me, her, tell me about your neighborhood. Have courage to ask and accept help. And why? I'll show you why. Click on that video for me. This is a video of, uh, 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 there, and then click, hold on. This is a video, all of the kits are from Tequila. Can you pause it? It's supposed to be fast. <laughs> so there is no sound. So pause, yep, click on that, and then can you make sound? Yeah, it's mute right now, so click on the speaker. Nope, not that one. This is one I have, I wish I had touch screen, screen screen. Right there. It's on. It's okay, it's so I'll be quiet. quiet. Our kids in Tequila, seven out of ten kids are refugees from all over the world. They are reminding us to befriend. They are reminding us, Hangama from Afghanistan, that's her little sister, reminding us, hit escape um, and hit present. Reminding us to befriend, to ask for help, 
when they were at the aquarium at the uh, what is that called the touch tank like can you help me can, can, can you hold my hand when I touch the octopus okay so to recap one takeaway numerous arrivals you and me both but two have courage to what Have courage to what? Yes. Friend. And the next part is to have courage to ask and accept help. And I'm going to ask you one more takeaway. Don't forget one and two. What are they? I'm a teacher. Number one is to befriend. Number two is to ask for help. Thank you. And the end. I want to do that right, Adam. Come on, help me out here. There you go. Jesus de Mare, thank you so much.